Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland. This is Boring Objects. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. This podcast is aimed at helping you to relax and maybe if you want to also drift off to sleep. And in each recording because I do different recordings and not just long one long one there's individual ones I talk about a particular object and then I just talk about my experiences with that object so today I am going to talk about hmm, what should I talk about today I talk about camera, a camera or cameras. Now, I guess I've had a fair bit of experience with cameras over the last probably 15 or 16 years but previous to that I didn't really have much need for cameras so thinking back to the first camera I had I think I was about 15 or 16 years old and I I bought a camera I purchased a camera and I was quite excited at having a camera of my own and back in those days I guess there's always been professional cameras but I didn't have one of them because I wasn't a professional photographer therefore I didn't see the merit in having a professional camera that just didn't seem much point in doing such a thing so I I got myself it wasn't an instant one which pushes out the picture I forget the name of those cameras do you, do you remember um, uh, not cross your heart bras that's a different advert there was there was uh, not panty liners I'm trying to think of some of the adverts that used to be on television 
when I was around 15 or 16. Uh, crunch nut cornflakes. No. Just trying to think. Oh. But there was a camera that you could buy and you could, it was quite a big old thing and you could take a picture of whatever it is you're taking a picture of. I guess the, the choices are fairly infinite uh, depending on your ability to travel, I suppose, I mean. If you're living in a village somewhere or a little town, perhaps uh, photographing Niagara Falls might not be, or the Nile River might not be available to you at this moment. So I suppose saying that the the options of taking pictures of things is infinite would probably be wrong because realistically there is only a finite amount of things in the world that you could take pictures of but it would take a long while you'd literally would have to be a vampire and you might think what only allowed to come out at night and having to drink virgin blood what's that got to do with a camera and I would say well first of all you don't have to be a virgin to feed a vampire uh, secondly um, I'm talking about the longevity of the lifespan and then you'd, you'd understand and you might say oh I understand I see what you mean because there's so many things to photograph in the world that a normal human lifespan probably won't cut the mustard. And I would say, yeah, I might not use the term cut, cut the mustard because uh, to me that's that makes me think of farting. But I understand uh, your sentiment in using that particular phrase because you know you're basically trying to express that uh, a human life is not long enough to accommodate being able to take photographic pictures of every single thing in the world there just wouldn't be enough time really to be able to fit it all in because well there's stuff on television to watch and oh, we have to eat as well although maybe you could eat and photograph at the same time especially if you eat lots of different food every single meal because then you could photograph the food that you eat every single meal but I'm not sure how workable that is uh, to be honest I haven't really giving it a huge amount of thought and to be honest I'm not going to and you can't make me so I so there <laughs> I had uh, this camera when I was about 15 or 16 years old and I was living in a flat with my stepmom and my little, little brother and my stepmom's mother 
who I guess would be my step grandmama. And she had her own bedroom. My stepmum slept in the guest room with my little brother. And I slept on the floor. Well, I slept on a camper bed, a fold up, uncomfortable camper bed in the living room in front of the television. So you may ask, what's that got to do with cameras? And I guess my answer would be, I'm trying to uh, add some filler to the recording. And you may say, well, why? And I, and I would answer, honestly, because I have very little to say about cameras. So I'm trying to add a bit of other stuff. Uh, to flesh out uh, a very weak story uh, in the hope that nobody would notice, you see. And I don't know why or when exactly, but I got this camera... So at the time I was working in a chip shop, which in itself isn't necessarily related to me purchasing a camera other than the money I got paid for working in the chip shop was the money that I handed over to the shopkeeper who then handed me the camera although I might have got the oh, I'm not sure I don't remember where I bought it I might have bought it at Argos which is like a catalogue shop where you don't actually hold the item you just look at it in a catalog uh, now it's on a like a, a computer screen and you just choose to purchase whichever uh, specific item that you're choosing to buy uh, maybe you've fallen in love with it from the image that you have witnessed with your eyes and I, I mean, in a way, they were kind of like the internet before the internet started, with their computer screens and everything. Uh, it was like, a, basically, it's a website already, but instead of ordering things to be delivered to you you'd order something and pay for it and it would be brought to a box or like a uh, like a little counter or a little a little hole in the wall or somewhere like that I think a little hole in the wall is probably wrong um Maybe a, a big hole. Maybe an entrance to another room. But with a... Uh, like a, a desk or something in front of it. With a till. So you can't actually go through there. I actually want to say a room. I mean a warehouse. It was a big old warehouse. Yeah, it had a lot of stuff. It was a little bit like Superstore out of the either the Beano or the Dandy comic. And every week in the comic, 
some old guy into the superstore because they said uh, we're a superstore we sell everything and every week somebody would come in and ask for the most random object the most random thing that you could even imagine and every week the shopkeeper would say wait a second sir or madam I will just go and get that for you now or maybe they and they might have made it a little more added a little bit more tension and the shopkeeper said let me go out back to see if I have that particular item in stock and that high tension that was there for the reader of the comic it wouldn't last very long because in the next image it showed the results of that search uh, I suppose there was occasions when you had to turn the page over to find out whether or not the superstore who always had every single item that anyone ever asked for week in week out every single week for years and years and years uh, the tension of knowing whether or not they would have it that week was um, I guess quite surprising really when you think about it hmm so I got my first camera from a place I think probably Argos I don't know if they have Argos's in other countries but uh, here they do which is lucky because that's where I went I took the camera home I say home but where I was staying at the time and a certain excitement took over me and I just wanted to photograph everything. It was almost as if it was the one thing that had been missing from my life. And it, it was as if I didn't, I thought to myself, I never need to look at anything again. I don't need to store anything in my memory. I can just take pictures of everything. And then if I want to be reminded, I can look back into my photograph album. So I took pictures of family members and By the time I'd used up all the film, and I think there was like 50 photographs, maybe a hundred, I don't know, on the camera, or maybe I had more rolls, because maybe it was only 12 pictures per roll, I'm not sure. But by the time I'd used up all the pictures, I'd lost completely interest. It was just... It, it was... Yeah, it, it was like a... It was a little bit like watching a pizza advert on television when you've already had your dinner just there's no there was nothing there no no real 
urgency for me to pick up the phone and sort of say, oh, uh, I'd like to order a pizza, please, because I saw your advert and I'm now wanting and craving pizza. But because I had maybe a sandwich earlier, a little while about, you know, maybe half an hour ago, I didn't have that particular need to eat a pizza. And I think it was that kind of feeling that I experienced when I had the camera and I got bored. And that was, I didn't have any cameras, I don't think, all through my 20s. And then there's no photographs much of me during that period. And then in 2002, I was working in a call center and a lady, um, I, I spoke to a female on the phone and she asked my telephone number and she wanted to, she said she liked talking to me. And wanted to talk to me again. Now that was against the rules. But I can't get sacked now. Because I don't work there anymore. So I, I can disclose it. Anyway. We. But if you are listening. And you are the manager of a call centre. And if I apply for a job there then please either forget this little story or just pretend that I was making it up. Thank you very much. And I was talking to this, this person out of work and we got on really well. But she lived... Uh, a f quite a long way away and she said to me one day this was actually it was a day off that's my day off but I worked shifts so I, the only day I didn't work was on a Sunday so I'd work every second Saturday all day so I would have on that week, I would have a day off during the week. It might be a Monday. It might be a Tuesday. Sometimes it was a Wednesday. Um, I can't remember if there was ever any Thursdays off. But Fridays as well. I mean, Mondays was one of the most busiest days. So I didn't have many Mondays off. I think the day that I'm referring to is possibly a Thursday. And I was actually visiting my nan on that day. Um, and she, this, this uh, lady, she texted me and she said, can you send a picture of yourself? Because I want to know what you look like. I really like you. And I can't wait to meet you. And everything like that. Um, so. I said I don't have a camera on my phone. Now this might sound surprising to those of you. Who have always had cameras on your phones. 
but back in the early 2000s, phones didn't have cameras, or at least not all of them, maybe some of them did, but I had a, a good phone that didn't have a camera. I think it was a Nokia. Was it 7210 or something like that? I forget. But it didn't. It, vi it did vibrate. And uh, I remember her saying, well, vibrating is not going to be any good unless you're going to take a picture and put it on top of the phone and let it vibrate all the way to where I live. Which I thought, I don't know if she was being sarcastic or not. Because I considered it, and I thought, well, what's the chances of it actually ending up where she is? Especially as I was sort of standing near the, near the sea at the time. You want it to get wet. So, I really liked her. I, you know, we, we would talk on the phone for hours. And, you know, outside of work. So what I did is I went into the shop and I just bought a phone, which had a camera on it. And I went down to the beach. I think it was quite rain, quite windy that day and it was raining. I think it was raining, and neither of which is relevant to the story, but um, again, I'm just trying to set the mood, the romantic mood of taking a picture. So I took this picture of myself and I sent it to her. I never heard from her again. still waiting actually I mean I figured well 19 years maybe by now maybe I don't know maybe it's not going to happen unless it got lost but yeah she didn't reply back so that was the first camera on a phone that I had. I can't remember. All the different phones I've had, but that's probably a different conversation. And then in. 2000 and probably a, a short while after that maybe 2003 maybe 2002 I purchased a digital camera and I couldn't figure out how to work it so it just became another dust collector I don't know what happened to it. But it had a very boring life. It just sat there. On the shelf. Just looking up at the ceiling. I didn't. I just couldn't. Be bothered to figure out how to use it. I guess I could have read the instructions. But. That goes against my. Uh religious views so the next time I had a camera I I guess it was on my laptop 
this was in the early 2000, about 2004 I guess but I started using I, I got myself a webcam to make hypnosis videos in 2006 which I would start putting onto MySpace to start with then YouTube and then when Facebook came along I used to put them on there and lots of other videos and social networking sites over the years so I would use I got I had a few different webcams always trying to find one that was the best that I could get but none of them were great and and then sometimes the rooms that I was in just weren't bright enough to to get the best out of the uh, webcam so that was that and then in 2008 again I'm not sure what kind of phone I had I really can't remember I know that I didn't have a smartphone I think they were around by then I'm not sure maybe not but I think by 2008 smartphones were around I didn't have one I had a very dumb one it was it really it could it could count to about four and it would start it 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 was really dumb it was a it was against refugees didn't like anyone that spoke a different language it was very dumb it was a very dumb phone um it blamed everyone but itself for the world's problems you know it was really really dumb uh so i didn't have a smartphone until i was hmm I think it was 2000 and 11 2011 was my first smartphone that's when I got an iPhone the four years previous to that I had a Blackberry and I'm not sure if you could take pictures on a Blackberry. I don't remember. But previous to that, um, I think in about nine, uh, 2008, I purchased, I was at university, and I purchased a video camera. And I started making videos with that to put on YouTube. But there was always a bit of a like a background grinding sound to the camera which I couldn't figure out how to stop but it didn't stop me I still did it anyway and the picture was pretty good at times and then in 2011 I started I had a mixture, I would use the video camera sometimes and I would use the iPhone camera to make videos. Um, I didn't really use cameras much for taking pictures at that time. I've never really been a big photographer. But making videos was something that I have spent like many years doing. And what I used to do is take the iPhone with me because it was a phone. So I'd take that with me where I was going. And sometimes if I had a, uh, a room that I was in, if I was working, I could make a video. It used to be very echoey though, 
because the camera would be maybe on the windowsill and I'd be back a fair distance and I'd be talking and the picture would be quite good but the sound would be very echoey but I didn't mind because I wasn't going to be watching the video which is a bit selfish really isn't it and then um, I got oh, I'll tell you what happened uh, when I gave when it was time for me to change my contract when I'd had the second uh, Blackberry um, or the first Blackberry or maybe it was 2012 that I got the Blackberry not 2011 but I remember I changed and I I got an Android an Android smartphone and I didn't like it it was the first touch phone a touch screen phone that I'd had and I didn't like it and I sent it back I said I don't like it and they said I phoned them up I said I don't like it and they said uh, can, can we take your details please what's your name and I said I don't like it they said yeah but we need more information uh, so I told them who I was and the they took that away and I had another Blackberry and then I realised I didn't really like the Blackberry anymore and I eventually got an iPhone and I haven't had the iPhone the whole time but uh, since that period I've had an Android a couple of times but what I've been looking for is a decent camera but what seems to have happened is the cameras on some of the Androids I think the Samsung was a very good camera but the audio wasn't particularly great and that seems to have been the way still with the iPhones, although the audio has improved somewhat, it's not always been you know a perfect, well, far from perfect audio. And then later on, a few years back, I. So I had the video camera for quite a few years and then that that went and then I got another camera which I used for a bit and the problem with that camera is it was such a good picture that I just I looked really old and I didn't I don't want to live in that kind of reality where people can see on film what I really look like I mean that that's why Instagram is so popular and Facebook and because you can filter you can filter the picture and that's what I want to do I want to filter I don't want to be seen for how I really look because it makes me sad and I don't want to scare away people who perhaps would want to watch the videos and I took I took a break I took a break from YouTube and didn't make really many videos for a while every now and then and uh, sometimes I'd, I'd take videos of me and uh, things going on in my life I do a, a Jason chats vlog which is what I do sometimes uh, take pictures of things this and that sometimes using the iPhone and I think I've had three iPhones so far and the I've now got a new camera which I got a few months ago and it 
It's a Sony VZ1, and it's, uh, it's it's specifically for blogging or vlogging, and I'm going to be using it uh, soon, and I'm going to be using it. I've set it up so I can use it as a webcam on my laptop which means that I will be able to stream as well using that camera because it's a very very good camera but more important than anything is it has a soft filter so that I can look like a, a little baby which is not really what I was looking for but it definitely softens up the um, you can't see so many crevices on my face because uh, it is a little bit like looking at the moon sometimes but uh, like a pink moon so now hopefully it will be a little bit better in the videos that I post on YouTube in the future will be a bit more or just be better quality and I will be getting a new iPhone at some point and that's supposed to have the best camera that they've ever done so I'll be interested to see how that works and how good the camera is so I don't really do much in the way of taking photographs but I do use the cameras to make videos so that's um, I'm pretty much up to date now I have had a few different webcams over the years as well um, as well as the inbuilt cameras in the different um, laptops and tablets as well but none of them have been particularly good for what I need they're okay for streaming to a friend you know zoom calls or whatever you uh, want but for making a video to put online like YouTube there the quality's not really there so that's why I've got myself a, a camera that's more suitable for what I need it for and plus the other camera I got the nice one which is really good picture it's only it didn't record for long enough it brought recorded for something like 27 minutes and my recordings usually last longer than that so I needed a camera that would last longer than that so that's that's about everything when it comes to cameras uh, I suppose I should add that I have seen cameras around I've seen people use cameras um, I did well I do still have but never really used uh, I got a GoPro that I purchased about probably five years ago now not really sure why I purchased it it was, well, it was a special offer it was the uh, I think Boxing Day special offer so it was pretty cheap and I, I thought oh maybe I'll buy that and uh, I agreed with myself so I did so thank you for listening remember to be kind to yourself you deserve to be happy Lots of love. Bye.